Hello everyone, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we're going to do a fast and loose watercolor painting from a photograph. We're going to uh, be monochromatic. We're going to use burnt umber. I'm going to have um, the Cotman brand burnt umber out. I'm using Stonehenge Aqua, uh, 140 pound, uh, cold press, 100% cotton. Now uh, with this, if you would like to follow along, feel free. The photo will be available to download off of um, the Patreon. I have my Patreon linked down below. Um, please consider supporting the channel on there. Please consider liking and subscribing. And with all that being said, let's jump into it. So being monochromatic and painting wet and wet, be a very fast, loose, fun style. Um, I'm kind of playing with that horizon and that dark shadow underneath that main group of trees. So we'd have that background there. We have that house sitting in this spot. We might use um, a credit card or something like that to scrape that out. We'll see what we'll do. We have the grouping, bring it to about here. We have the road, which um, I'm not gonna really do any modifications to the road. I might change my mind and do something with that. But compositionally, it's not the best since it kind of leads off the page right here. So we may need to really focus on this tree to block. Now you may recognize this scene as I painted a slightly different angle in watercolor and gouache. So right now I'm just kind of putting things in wet and wet. I'll move some pigment around with a paper towel in a moment. I think my brush might be on the end of its days. It's shedding a lot of hair right now. It's got definitely three years underneath its belt. It's taken a lot of abuse. All right, grabbing a paper towel. I like the blue shop rags. Somebody said that they make them for glass as well, which would be lint free, which would be even better. So, unfortunately, I think I have like a six pack of paper towels of the blue paper towels. So, we'll see. So, I'm putting in the sky and then lifting right back out. So, I'm not getting pure white and I'm getting a little bit of texture. And I can go back and forth. And we can think about where we have our light source. I'm thinking it might be best to put it in this region. Our whitest whites. You can see from there. Okay. Now. We're going to use the same approach that I use whenever I do a two-colored experiment um, or whatever I call um, the tonalist experiments. We were just going back and forth. We're using texture and tonality. A grouping of trees right here. We have this big old grouping here and it'll come out to some sporadic. This will be an interesting foreground element right here. We have a lot of trees pass up. We can do a lot of scraping and we can use the, um, the rigger. We might maybe even use a razor blade but if we do, do if we do wind up using one, make sure you're careful. Okay. 
in other news, for those that just like to kind of watch the paint process and just hear me ramble, tomorrow, you know, I'm a school teacher, tomorrow the uh, students return back to school. So Friday, Monday, and today. So we were there just doing our teacher in services, getting ready for the school year. This year I'll be teaching business math and financial math. So it's a half year course and then a half year course. And then I will be uh, teaching math essentials. So we have a lot of students um, coming in that you know, because of the whole COVID thing, we're gonna bring everybody up to speed. Unfortunately, I won't be having a physics class this year. I'm not quite sure if um, we just weren't able to offer it because of trying to, uh, you know, make up and compensate for all of the, uh, the learning delays that potentially had in the past year from COVID lockdowns. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to take the credit card, the rounded edge, and scrape this grouping. If you're following along, you don't have to like paint, do it exactly like the photo is. You can see that they kind of weave in and out, and they even weave in and out amongst um, darker uh, portions. So we'll probably take that rigger and come in. We can even scrape up here. With the concentration of water, you'll have some harsh lines where it'll backfill and some areas where it might open up just because we're a little bit kind of on the wetter side with the paper right now. We can scrape that house out right now. It's been a while since I've done a house scraping. I like to come on the angle for the roof and then come down straight right there. We have the number one rigger, which we can use to feed in darker quantities. You'll see how that area is wet right next to that. Darkening around that will make some areas of interest. Bring some tree elements, wet and wet. Then we almost immediately jump over to throwing the brush to this bigger one right here. I personally like to use two different brushes. The number four, hold on one second, I gotta move Hammy out of a box. Sorry, I believe I was talking about the two different brushes. The number four just helps with that fast and loose just to get more paint and pigment out. The number one helps with uh, thinner lines. I think you can achieve the thin lines with the number four, but um, you have to go nice and slow with it. So it's up to you. Another group right here, that's that tree. We'll get some texture in these spots. We'll come back with the hake in a moment. We'll work around the painting, not focus on one side too much. While I work on this tree, I'll tell you about Hammy. He was scratching around in a box. And I put a, um, I guess they would call it a dark room bag. You can use it to uh, load film into the um, developing canister. Yesterday, 
I de developed my first film in like 13 years. And at that point I had done it in a dark room in high school and college. This was my first time ever doing it at home. Um, it was really cool, it's really exciting. So adding another art technique back into the repertoire. And uh, I've been playing with the cyanotypes and the uh, Van Dyke brown printing process, which uh, the goal is to do the black and white photography on our larger format negative. Right now it's on medium format. I can't afford a large format, um, like a four by five inch um, camera yet. But I'm doing it on 120 film, which will be like two and a half by two and a half, two and a half by three and a half images. But I think it'll be interesting. Anyway, so Hammy was scratching around at a box that had a darkroom bag in it and the last thing it needs is a hole from a cat claw <laughs> and totally defeats the whole purpose of that bag. There we go. We have those speckling of shadow and light coming through. We just leave it like that. Okay. Now I'm going to switch back to the number one rigger. Add more branches up in here. Have some that come over. Since this is kind of just a demo exploration, I'm going quicker, but you can slow down and take your time with it. I made a perspective error. You can see how high this um, house is in the picture plane compared to this spot right here. So the house should probably be lower. So what might help is to put grass up in front. Just pushing things around, almost using the, I guess it would be called the ferrule of this to scrape. In fact, let's play around with this bright grass that's popping up over here. This is using the sharper edge of the card. So I have two or three different pieces of uh, credit card if you're going to use the scraping technique. Here's the flat side. And you can see how much variety we can get from these marks. And when I do this, I'm flattening the paper out. Okay, back to the hake. Building up those darks. Getting sharper marks. Over our soft background. Nice variety of texture. Really haven't spent too much time on this tree grouping. Let's lift 
messed up. Some of those lighter portions. Our paper is drying out, so it might be beneficial to do a dry off and then we'll do a um, look at it and kind of accentuate some spots. Let me pause the camera real quick. All right, I did a quick dry off and I decided we'll work our way back to front. We'll work on texture and tonality. We'll play with our different brushes. So here's the number four. Number one of the hake would be just as good. Get that kind of nice dark area right here. texture up around yeah. sideways dry brush effect look at this background back here there is a um, another building back here that I failed to put in, but that's totally fine. You can, like we, I said in the beginning, you could omit, leave out whatever you want. All right. Let's grab a razor blade, pull out the side of this building some, we have a little bit more depth. If we wanted to, we could come out here and pull out some other texture. Just got a little bit of feel back here. Okay. Let's move to this grouping. Nice and dark here. Some dry brush and it simply just gives the feel of more growth coming up building up darks and here okay while well, I'm on this layer so I know I said back to front and I'm kind of working on that foreground layer Sorry about that. Number four, rigor. And we can grab the number one. moment I might be able to get sufficient thin enough marks with just this guy see if we can get any texture pop up and we could scrape for another layer okay let's look at this area right here. We used the end of the, the metal portion of the brush to kind of scrape some. And now I'm just playing with those lines. You can build up a dark there. Let's get a little more water and then wipe off so I can get that vertical dry brush effect. A 
little bit for that shadow there. Build up these darks. Grab the hake. Some vertical strokes. there's any spots we can exploit the razor blade with. Maybe come in with that edge and dig up some of these highlights. Just be careful using uh, the razor blade. Come into the tree and scrape down with it. If you drag, you're gonna get that uh, popping one. You can also kind of cut on an angle to try to get thin lines. You might be able to see that, yeah, that little bit of difference there. Uh, just, like I said, be careful, please, if you decide to use that. This razor blade's pretty old, so I need to replace it. You see how if I go with it, I can get kind of longer lines. If I go against, I get those popping motions. So, experiment. You can also drag it. Even though I love that texture effect we had from the paper towel there. Let's pause, let's see where we're at. All right, I just did a quick dry off. I think I'm gonna leave this the way it is. I'm gonna stop the video in a few moments. Um, I think I'll have a part two where I'll come back with um, potentially bl black pigment or maybe even gouache, uh, color gouache and play with it over that and see what we can do uh, to further this sketch. But I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like, subscribe, follow. Let me know in the comments what you think and what you would like to see. I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Bye.